crowd swarming the U.S. Supreme Court today as the justices get their first chance to weigh in on same-sex marriage. Welcome to Lunch Break. I'm Wendy Bounds. Here with me now to recap the morning's events in court is Peter Landers. Peter, thanks so much for being with us. Uh, tough going. A lot of questions uh, skeptical of both attorneys this morning on this first case to hear about same-sex marriage. Tell us the direction the questions were headed in. Well, Charles Cooper, the lawyer who's defending Proposition 8, uh, was first up and got a lot of skeptical questions from the liberal justices especially. Uh, they were asking him, what's the reason for uh, trying to ban same-sex marriage in California? What's your rational basis for this? And he said uh, marriage is based around procreation. That's one important reason, he said, why California had a good reason to pass this law. And procreation, that line of questioning uh, went on for a little bit. In fact, at one, uh, one point, as we've been following on our live blog online on WSJ.com, actually got uh, some groans from the audience there. Uh, Justice Breyer noting that there are a lot of opposite-sex couples that can't have children uh, and yet choose to get married. And then Justice Kagan jumping in and saying a lot of opposite-sex couples who were getting married after the age of 55 and may not be having kids where Mr. Cooper then responded um, that even for older couples, it's rare that both parties to such a marriage are infertile. That seemed to get some groans in the courtroom. <laughs> That's right. I mean, it, it did get at the core of this case, which is, you know, what is the purpose of the institution of marriage and, and is procreation uh, really a central part of it? And at the, in the latter half, Chief Justice John Roberts suggested that he too did see some role for procreation in justifying the, the institution of marriage. Uh, now, he also asked a lot of questions about standing in the case, whether these uh, folks from California even have the right to uh, defend the law in court. Let's talk a little bit about Chief Justice Roberts as well as Justice Kennedy, seen as uh, two potentially pivotal votes in this. Can you get a feel? I mean, everybody on both sides reading so much into the line of questioning uh, here, Peter. Could you get a sense where either one of them might be headed? Yes, Justice Kennedy, who has been the court's greatest champion of gay rights and two important opinions he's written over the past 20 years, he suggested that uh, everyone needs to listen to the voices of children in California who have same-sex parents, the parents who aren't entitled to get married in the state. So that suggests that he was sympathetic, uh, at least to some degree, to the gay marriage cause. And uh, towards the end of the arguments, he also uh, talked about an appeals court decision which uh, created a rather narrow ground for striking down Proposition 8. He said he didn't think that appeals court that the logic of that court really worked very well. So maybe he was looking at a broader uh, scope for a decision. That's not clear. What about the question of whether the people defending Proposition 8, uh, which bans same-sex marriage in California, were not injured enough to defend this law, Peter? How, how did that go down in the courtroom today? Naturally, of course, Mr. Cooper defending the law said these uh, people who actually put the proposition on the ballot are certainly entitled to defend it in court. He said they, there is a strong interest that they have. Maybe they weren't personally injured by the, uh, uh, by the gay marriage issue or, or they have nothing to personally gain from banning gay marriage, but he said the whole state has, a, has an interest in that and these people are representing those in the state who want to uphold the ban on gay marriage. And the next step here, this is, are the, the arguments are done for this particular case, Peter, is that correct? That's right, we're done for today and then we come back tomorrow with arguments on the Defense of Marriage Act. That's the law that denies federal recognition to same-sex marriages. All right, we'll be back with you all then tomorrow. We'll continue to follow all of this on WSJ.com. Thanks for being with us.